Howdy y'all and welcome to Craters Gaming. Today we're going to be making a sunken statue that's fallen into our ocean floor. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it. Start off with we're going to decapitate this Chelsea Barbie doll. Now in hindsight, I probably should have used a way cheaper doll. It would have been a lot easier to remove all this hair, which you'll see the struggle bus here in a little bit. But to start off with, we're going to go ahead and remove her arms, her legs, and her head. And even though I don't use all the parts in this project, I do plan on using the rest of it in a later project. Make the job hair removal easier, I'm going to go ahead and lop it off and make it kind of look like uh, Cynthia from the Rugrats. I definitely get that feel. But we're going to chop off as much as we can to make pulling it out a little easier, which the struggle bus does hit pretty hard just trying to remove the hair. But once it's all done, I am going to hot glue it to give her kind of a cap where there's no holes and you don't see those. Probably another good reason on why to use a cheaper Barbie doll because it doesn't have that much uh, hair follicles or the giant gaping hole where it looks like her brain's been removed. With that out the way, we're probably going to move on to the most expensive part of the whole project, the milk bone box. <laughs> I'm just going to cut a base out of the milk bone box um, that I'm going to set my doll on top of. I probably could have made this a little smaller, but this is just scattered terrain anyways, so I think it looks fine in the end. Using leftover plastic plants from the pet section and from the crafting area and Dollar Tree. So we go super expensive on this project. <laughs> the dumb doll was the most expensive of the entire project. That and probably the hot glue. We're definitely going to make sure that her head's not going to roll around anywhere and her arms are going to stay put. So I'm going to go ahead and level them off to where it's more of an even setting and then also hot glue them down. So that said, I am going to put some texture onto the cardboard. That way it has a little something to hold on to when I start to put the sand on. Uh, this is optional. You don't have to do this part, but I like the way it looks, so that's the way I roll. This portion of the video, we're going to go ahead and pause it to remind you that you can become a Patreon or buy us a coffee. All proceeds do go towards furthering the channel and buying supplies. You will also get a shout out. Everything is stuck down. We're going to base it in white. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my gold and my silver ready. That way I can kind of make it like marble. Painting on the gold first, and then we're going to outline it in the silver to give it a little bit more definition. Like most things, there's no rhyme or reason on where the lines go, it's just what tickles my fancy. I suppose it would help if I gave you who makes the paint that I'm using at the moment. It came from Army Painter, and I believe it's Dwarven Gold and Deadly Iron that I am using. And as per mentioned earlier, I am just going to outline little pieces of the gold to give it definition. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing down some of the plants that I want to use to make it look like it really belongs on the ocean floor. And we're just going to speed it up, that way you are not bored to tears, because I know I would be if I had to watch paint dry. <laughs> also going to glue down some foliage from Woodland Scenics and it's just going to go here or there to hide my glue spots. Um, it doesn't really matter how you put these or what order you put these. It's just I like the orange and I like the green because I think it gave it a little bit of a unique look. Once that step is done we're going to go ahead and slather it down with some PVA glue or school glue. It doesn't matter if it's the expensive stuff or the cheap stuff. I kind of prefer to use the cheap stuff because, well, I'm cheap. So we're going to go ahead and sprinkle down some sand once we get this smeared where we want it. I'm also going to dip it into some flocking because, well, it's easier and it covers up everything and I don't make a gigantic mess, which I was getting ready to do. So this kind of helps me save from doing that. Now that flocking is also from Woodland Scenics. It's just a finer variety. And I am going to go back and re-hit the blank spots that you see there with a little bit more PVA glue and then do another dip. Once that dries, we're going to go ahead and hot glue some seashells to make it really come together with that seafloor look. And it's just creepy and it's already a creepy piece, so why not make it more creepy, right? Next 
next step, we're going to be using some marsh green to do some cover up because that's the way we roll. <laughs> and it'll also help break up some of the browns and some of the weird greens as well. It gives a little bit more definition. It up a little bit more, we're going to be using some parakeet green and going over some of the areas that we've already hit with the darker green, but we're also going to kind of dry brush little spots here or there to make it look really mossy and gross. There you have it, super easy, super cheap. If you like the video, please hit the like, share, comment. It helps out a whole lot, and I hope to see you not this Friday, but next Friday. Bye.